Hey everyone, my name is Matt Halperson, and today I'll be presenting on the genetics of Tourette's syndrome. So first, a definition of Tourette's syndrome, um, or TS. Um, it belongs to a spectrum of neurodevelopmental conditions referred to as tic disorders. Um, this is from the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or DSM, fifth edition. Um, first, let's define tics. Tics are defined as uh, sudden, rapid recurrent motor movements or vocalizations. Um, and the basic criteria for being diagnosed with TS is having both motor tics and vocal tics um, that present for at least one year. Uh, other key dis tic disorders to keep in mind, um, chronic tic disorder or CTD. Um, the feature of CTD is basically motor tics or vocal tics but not both, um, lasting for at least one year. So uh, tic disorders have a wide spectrum. So TS prevalence and comorbidities. Um, world estimated prevalence of TS is uh, in the range of 0.3 to 1% in children. Uh, psychiatric comorbidities. Um, TS cases um, most often fr frequently are diagnosed with uh, obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD, that's 50% of cases, and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD, in 54% of cases. So a brief history of uh, Tourette's syndrome, um, first described by and named after um, George Albert Edouard Brutus Gillis de la Tourette in 1885. Uh, he described the condition in nine separate patients. Um, but even before that, tics have been described in individuals um, as far back as the 15th century. Um, I've highlighted here um, the book Malleus Malef Maleficarum, which translates to the Hammer of Witches, and is basically an encyclopedia of witchcraft um, written during that time period. And uh, in it, um, a case of a priest is described that has uh, tics, and they blame it on demonic possession. Um, nowadays, we have, instead of uh, stacks of um, Malleus Maleficarum books, uh, stacks of DSM-5 books. Um, and in those books, both TICS and TS are recognized um, as neurodevelopmental in origin, you know, rather than um, some origin that's superstitious. So what evidence do we have that Tourette syndrome um, has a large um, genetic component. Uh, well, first line evidence is from uh, twin studies. And in twin studies, what we do is we take twins and we determine, you know, in instances where one of them has a disorder like Tourette syndrome, how often does the other twin have that disorder? Um, and so you get these concordance rates that range from zero to one. Um, if the values are zero, then basically there's no genetic contribution to risk, and if value is one, then genetics entirely explains risk. Um, so these estimates that we're listing here, they're not the first ones that were derived for Tourette's syndrome, but they're one of the more recent ones. Um, this is a large meta-analysis of uh, twin studies, and it features a bunch of different disorders and traits in terms of these concordance values, but here we're just gonna concentrate on values for TS. Um, monozygotic twins, this concordance estimate, and when I say monozygotic, I mean uh, identical twins. Um, so the estimate here is 0.63, and then dizygotic twins, um, so twins that are not identical, um, basically siblings, um, that estimate is 0.34. So based on this and other more specifically TS-focused twin studies, uh, genetics appear to explain a large portion, but not all of risk for TS and for uh, tick disorders in general. So another line of evidence is um, more generalized uh, family studies. And so when we talk about family studies, um, for instance, we're talking about uh, taking uh, population scale registry data, um, finding individuals with Tourette syndrome, and then finding their relatives in the data um, and saying, okay, are individuals that are first degree relatives, second degree, third degree, um, are they, if, if you're a first degree relative of somebody with TS or CTD, are you yourself more likely to be a case of a TS or CTD? And two different studies that came out in the last couple of years, one focused on the Swedish registry 
one focused on the Danish registry report that for being a first degree relative, yes, um, your likelihood of being a case, um, if you're a first degree relative of a TS CTD case goes up um, a lot. And they both also report risk elevations if you're a second degree relative or a third degree relative of a TS CTD case. Uh, so in short, um, what we're seeing here in these separate studies focused on different populations is essentially clustering of TS and CTD diagnosis within families in a population. And this is consistent with a um, significant genetic contribution to risk. So given that family-based studies support a genetic contribution, uh, the next question is, can we identify specific genetic variation that contribute to TS risk? Um, we could do that by using uh, modern DNA um, genotyping and sequencing technologies to collect, collect genetic data. Um, and then we can conduct formal case control studies um, on a large scale on the data collected. And so then I guess the point, what's the point in doing this? Um, so there are two. Um, one is to be able to assess um, TS, TS genetic risk profiles on a per patient, per patient basis. And then the other point is to produce a map of genes whose activity is perturbed in TS. This will help us understand TS a lot better and it'll help us treat it a lot better, uh, potentially on a um, you know, resolution that is patient specific. So in terms of the work that's been done so far, First, I'll talk a little bit about genome-wide association studies, or GWAS of TS. Um, and when we talk about GWAS, uh, we're talking, in this case, primarily about variants that are uh, common in a population. And what we're looking for is we're looking for instances where um, variants are found uh, um, to a genome-wide significant degree um, in cases more often than controls. And when I say genome-wide significant, this is controlling for, if you're looking at 7 million variants that are common, you have to, um, each of those is a test and you have to adjust your significance threshold based on the number of tests performed. So this is the significance threshold, um, so to speak, that a variant has to pass to be significant. Most recent studies from 2019, we have uh, 4,800 cases and 9,500 controls. There's only one genome-wide significant locus. Um, and when they um, try to see if it replicates in a separate cohort of around 1,000 cases and 6,000 controls, um, they're not able to see a significant case control difference in that separate cohort. And unfortunately, that's kind of a standard requirement um, for implicating a variant in a trait or a disease is seeing if in a separate cohort uh, you see the same thing. So, so additional findings. Um, one critical one is um, for um, the total common variant contribution to TS heritability. Um, there were two different estimates um, produced for this total contribution. One is for the subset of cases that were more family history depleted, and one is for um, individuals that were more enriched for family history. And what they saw is that um, in terms of the total contribution to TS heritability from common variants, um, you know, there's, there's a notable contribution in family history depleted cases. The number is a bit higher in uh, family history enriched cases where you might have siblings that uh, also have Tourette syndrome. Um, so that, um, that would suggest that um, these families where there are multiple affected um, have a higher load of um, uh, risk, genetic risk coming from common variation. Uh, and so another thing, um, the the folks that put together this paper um, were also able to calculate um, what they call polygenic risk scores for Tourette syndrome in separate samples um, outside of the case control cohort that they analyzed. And they found it was predictive of Tourette's case status, uh, CTD case status, and this part is pretty important, the recorded worst ever tick severity. Um, so they're actually able to use PRS um, to actually predict just how bad the ticks are um, per individual. Um, so it's kind of like a treating of it as like a true sort of quantitative trait rather than you have Tourette's and you, know, or you don't have Tourette's. So, so let's see, next up, um, 
we'll talk a little bit about uh, rare variant studies that have been done on TS. Um, so first, um, rare copy number variant studies or CNV studies of TS. Um, CNVs just briefly are um, defined as deletions or duplications of DNA sequence in the genome. Um, they tend to be um, quite a bit more rare um, and deleterious. Um, and so it makes sense to focus on them in terms of their contribution to genetic risk for Tourette syndrome. Uh, the most recent paper, uh, Huang et al. 2018, has around 2,400 cases and around 4,000 controls. Um, they implicated two separate specific rare CNVs with uh, Tourette's risk. And it's estimated that you'd find these specific CNVs in around 1% of uh, TS cases total. Uh, one is deletions overlapping the gene Norexin 1, and another is uh, duplications overlapping the gene Contactin 6. And uh, more generally, um, they saw that in general cases have an excess of CNVs relative to controls, specifically very large CNVs. Um, yeah, presumably the larger the CNV, the more uh, damaging it's gonna be because it's gonna delete or duplicate more genes in the process. Um, and also there's an excess in cases relative controls of um, previously reported uh, pathogenic uh, CNVs. So all of this is consistent with a contribution of CNVs to uh, Tourette's risk um, and probably a converging on specific uh, Tourette's uh, risk genes. So another type of um, rare variant study design that's been used a lot is uh, whole exome sequencing. Um, whole exome sequencing involves uh, uh, sequencing the 1% of the human genome that codes for protein. Um, and then uh, one other thing to note about these studies is that they're often uh, so-called trio-based. Um, the goal here ends up being uh, identifying variants that are present in the uh, TS case and absent from both parents. Um, so we, these kind of variants we refer to as uh, de novo variants, and they're generally the focus of these exome studies, in particular the Tourette's uh, studies that we'll talk about. So I'll mention two. One is from Wilsey et al. 2017. Um, they identified uh, uh, one risk gene um, that we can highlight here, and that's WWC1. Um, a more recent paper a year after that, uh, Wang et al. 2018, identified an additional uh, risk gene, um, CELSER3. Um, so what's key is that in both, um, they both report an excess of damaging de novo variants uh, relative to controls. Um, and I will mention briefly too, that when they look at families that have um, multiple effectors, these so-called multiplex families, um, they actually do not see that excess relative to controls. Um, and so kind of the take home there is we're talking about um, polygenic risk, um, yeah, the, the burden of common, common variants in these multiplex families being higher. Um, what this suggests here is that in those families, common variant risk, um, the burden of common variants is higher, but these rare or de novo variants, their burden is lower in these families. Um, so rare variants might have more of an influence in these simplex families without family history. Um, and uh, common variant burden might have more of an influence in uh, multiplex families with multiple effectives. In general, uh, results from CNV and WES suggest that rare variants can be used to identify specific risk genes for TS and that there are more to be found. So upcoming TS genetic analyses to highlight. Uh, GWAS, there's an analysis being assembled now. Um, the total cohort includes uh, 13,500 cases and at least 50,000 controls. Uh, CNV, uh, we have an analysis being assembled right now as well. And this one's going to include over 10,000 cases and at least 20,000 controls. So a substantial increase in sample size relative to the studies that we've described here before. Um, and the sample size should be adequate for risk variant discovery for both studies. So summary, uh, TS is a neurodevelopmental Neurodevelopmental condition uh, defined by the presence of a persistent vocal, um, persistent vo vocal and motor tics that last for at least one year, um, consistent with a contribution of genetics to TS. Um, TS and CTT diagnosis are highly concordant between twin pairs and cluster within families in large populations. Um, 
We see that common genetic variants explain a portion of uh, TS trait heritability in cases relative to non-TS controls. And we also see that TS cases are enriched for rare variants that damage protein coding genes. So, thank you for listening.